From NASDAQ's Market Site, I'm your host, Christina Ayanian. And joining me today is founder and CEO of Traction, Igor Marinelli. Igor, thank you so much for joining. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Of course. Now, talk to me about your founding story. You come from a manufacturing family. Yes. What was really that vision behind Traction? Yes, so my father was a machine operator, uh, worked in the manufacturing for 35 plus years, um, specifically at a paper mill uh, for, for 25 years, I mean. Um, and so I grew up in that Italian Brazilian part of the family where um, you know, all I could think of is how goods are manufactured. Um, and in fact, I think one of the uh, Father's Day, my, my father took me to a tour. Um, and, and I was like a, really a kid at that time, but that had an impact on seeing you know, how essentially trees are turning into pulp, they are turning into paper. Just generally, when you think about manufacturing, uh, it's, it's within our whole day-to-day, -day and, and we uh, sometimes don't notice, like the things that you're wearing right here and this tablet that you're using and the cameras that are recording this, like they all came from the manufacturing, probably a manufacturing site that Traction is operating nowadays. Mm -hmm. So you start, uh, 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 employees that start working at Traction, they start reading labels, and like where was that manufactured? Like, is it a, tra a Traction site? So um, it's pretty awesome. Laying the groundwork for everyday life. Yes. So talk to me about Traction and what the company does. Yeah, so Traction today, we monitor machines, mm -hmm. manage assets, and essentially we save energy and resources. And, and we do this in a couple of uh, different ways, but um, we work with manufacturing uh, sectors of food and beverage, automotive, consumer goods, open paper, um, heavy industries and commodities. Um, some of our customers are listed at NASDAQ. And we essentially take care of all their most um, pressing challenges when it comes to maintenance. Mm -hmm. So if you think about who's actually powering up the line, those are maintenance managers, maintenance engineers that are ensuring that the machines are operating. Mm -hmm. And ensuring availability, ensuring uptime is revenue, right? So it's estimated nowadays that um, the world's 500 biggest manufacturers are losing 11% of their revenue just at the machine level. Wow. And that's what we're solving for. That's amazing. You're really revolutionizing the space. And it sounds like it's a very, uh, po it's, a, it's a partnership approach with your clients. Absolutely. We have boots on the ground, mm -hmm. really hard hats. I visit uh, my customers a lot. And, and we really do go the extra mile. We go and visit the customer sites because essentially they're looking for where do I start? How do I do that? Uh, sometimes they are at low maturity, but sometimes they have high maturity, but uh, they are using legacy and cumbersome systems, so they could be 10x more productive. So we really ship out our engineers and they map the whole floor plan of their facility and deliver a diagnostic for the customer saying, this is how you're gonna get more productive. Increasing efficiency. And speaking of which, we're living in a digital age, in the age of AI. How is Traction embedding AI into the company? Yeah, uh, it's so funny because when we think about the age of AI, we're thinking about the generative AI, right? So uh, Traction is parsing all the equipment data sheet. So if you think about, um, you buy an air compressor, this building has HVAC shielders, uh, you probably have a contracted manufacturer that comes here and, and do the maintenance for you. But uh, industries, they have to do it themselves. So what are the components that are inside the machines? How do I operate that? How do I maintain that? And what are the next steps to remedy when a failure is, is, is popping up? So that's where we put a lot of AI, LLMs, and, and, and Gen AI inside that engine. But there's also a Shazen part. Um, I say Shazen because when that app is identifying what song is playing, Traction is also identifying what failure is playing at your asset. So we have to parse unstructured data. We have to listen to vibration, sound, temperature, pressure, all those physical variables. So we collect all the physical operations variable to give you an, an, an assertive diagnostic about the health of your asset. So that you know that if it's lack, lacking lubrication, mm -hmm. what lubricant code you need to use to, to ensure your your machine is uptime. Well, it's really a holistic end-to-end -end solution. Yes, and we really bet on solving the problem. Mm -hmm. So we bet on uh, from the instrumentation, from right there at the sensing level of the machine all the way down 
to the platform that our key users are using every day on tablets or mobile apps. Absolutely. We're seeing macroeconomic trends as it relates to labor shortages. How is this affecting traction? How is traction really solving for this? Yeah, that's one of the main challenges that we listen uh, over and over and over when we go and visit those factories. I cannot fulfill those jobs. And if you look at US Chamber uh, Commerce uh, data, essentially we are in an all-time high labor shortage. I mean, manufacturers are being pressed in all possible directions. There's labor shortage. There's the pressing to reshoring mm -hmm. their goods to the US. There's near shoring pressures uh, in Mexico as well. And if you think about why labor shortage is happening, I mean, manufacturing is not as attractive to the younger generations. So how are we upgrading those legacy systems so that uh, we become attractive to the younger generations um, and, and that, you know, cannot retain knowledge at the same pace that the older generations were. That's just data, right? Yeah. So you need something fast, you need to interpret right here, and you essentially need to use the software like as a chat GPT. That's how uh, we are pushing the, the boundaries. And you're doing this globally. You have now, uh, and you're based in the US, Mexico, and Brazil. Talk to me about these three sites and how you really run it so well. Yeah, so, um, Manufacturing plants, they are essentially manufacturing the same good no matter where they are, right? So whether it's a plant here in the US or in Mexico, I mean, they're producing the same. Uh, there's a symbiotic relationship as well. So um, there's a lot of those, those plants that their headquarters is in the US, but they're manufacturing elsewhere. And we, and we do really support them globally, right? So uh, there are cultural differences. That's why we believe in food food on the ground. So our local support team, success team, they're going to be on the ground, but our engineering, R&D, it's always going to be fought around here. What are some of the results that your customers are seeing? So on average, it's a 43% downtime decrease, um, but there's also supply chain uh, uh, challenges that we're tackling. So if you think about if you can maintain your asset better, then you can anticipate as well, and you're not going to have any supply chain delays when you're procuring for parts. There's another side of the equation as well. Um, some customers are actually maintaining and replacing components according to manufacturing specifications, but that they shouldn't replace at every six months, but they are. Mm -hmm. So we also postpone that replacement until it's the right condition for them to replace, and then we come in, so they save on that spare parts as well. That's amazing, and investors are noticing the company is constantly growing. You recently announced a $120 million Series C. Congratulations. Thank you. What do you plan to do with this funding? So the funding comes at a great time where we're doubling down on R&D. I would say uh, companies out there are not investing enough at R&D. If you just look at the margin, like we, you should really, when you think the product is ready, double down. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you're going to get eaten by the market. So. Um, we really don't settle and, and we don't settle for less quality um, and, and shipping quality products is its main priority for us. So uh, we're closing partnerships with um, um, a big um, uh, providers of infrastructure of AI to train our models uh, as well. So this funding is really fueling in R&D as well as the expansion. Uh, uh, to other markets that were already happening. That's amazing. The sky is the limit, and we are so excited to continue watching. Igor, thank you so much for joining. Thank you.